think everybody <clears throat> pretty much was here on Wednesday. Um, kind of, the Lord opened our eyes to another aspect of this concerning our participation in the prayers. Uh, there, there are times whenever each of us may have opportunity to be the one actually voicing the prayer. But everyone can be engaged in the prayer. That's where the prayers rise up as one voice, is while we are, uh, even while someone else is leading it, while we are actively listening and thinking about what they're saying and agreeing with it in our heart, then the Lord sees that unity. So I would, uh, I would admonish everyone, old and young, to shut out whatever distractions exist your eyelids are a wonderful, a wonderful means of doing that. Because I can tell you right now, what you're looking at is what you're thinking of. At least in large measure. So our first request tonight is that none of our prayers would be rejected by God because of our condition. Our, our text is Isaiah 1 and verse 15. It says, and when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Now this was the Lord speaking to Israel. But God is of purer eyes than to behold iniquity. And God has no fellowship with sin. Never did have, never will have. And so we're asking that the Lord would be gracious to us and in all ways that we would be separate or separated from, uh, estranged to the things that would cause God to not hear our prayers. Just because we say them doesn't mean that God gives heed. We have to be an accepted people for him to hear our prayers. God's ear is open to the righteous, not to just anybody who feels like asking him. God isn't... God isn't um, there's there's these uh, stories, you know, about genies. And they give you your wishes. God's not a genie. He he does he's not up there just waiting for something to do so that whenever men come and ask something if we ask to consume it on our own lust, we know we don't hear he doesn't hear that. We don't have that request. When if we ask a miss, we don't have that request. God is not going to be moved away from his purpose and his work and his will and his righteousness and character by listening. He's not even going to give heed to those kind of prayers. He's not going to waste his time even listening to it. So we want to be a people whom God, whom God can, can listen to, whom God, it pleases him when he hears our voice in thanksgivings, in praises, in requests, in acknowledgments. It, we're asking for that, that we would be a people that would not be in a condition where God would have to say to us the things that he has had to say to some people, even those that, in that in the, under the old covenant, were a covenanted people with him. So again, our prayer is that none of our prayers would be rejected by God because of our condition. There'd really be no excuse for us to be in that condition. So who will lead us in that request? Okay, Brother Jeremy, Brother Judah, and Brother Matt, and Sister Laura. Thank you. If you'd like to turn next to 2 Thessalonians, we'll be in chapter 3, reading verse 1. And we're praying that we would all pray that the Word of God might have free course and be glorified. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the Word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. There were times when God's Word was glorified, I think, uh, here of the Thessalonians who received the Word of God as it is in truth the Word of God. It was seen for what it was, that this was, this was the communication that was from 
God, divine communication. It was given in words of men, but it was from the mind and heart of God. He was the one that had authored the, the sayings and had them recorded so that we could have them. And we're asking that this same word would have free course, that it wouldn't meet with resistance, with obstacle, with objection, but that it would be able to, to flow, as it were, from God freely and copiously. And also that it would be glorified, that men would recognize it for what it is. That there wouldn't be, um, you know, you, you, now you think, okay, well, who wouldn't know that? Well, we have people that haggle about whether this is actually scripture or whether that's scripture or was this really inspired or was that inspired? We have people who, who edit it just by neglect. There are certain passages, they don't like them, so we just never talk about them. See, that's not the word having free course. This is the ministry of the word as God would have it ministered in, it, without any kind of hindrances from men, but to be able for it to, to be able to speak freely and fully the, f the whole counsel of God, not the edited or the abridged version, man's version of what we like to talk about and what we like God said, so we'll think about those things. That's, that's one way. Or to, that it wouldn't be fought against by human intervention or what we call logic. It's really not logical to fight against God. But they would take the devices of what they call logic and they would try to, to dissect and, and pick apart and segment and separate and all these type of things. No, we want it to be glorified as the Word of God. If men ever see it, that this is the Word of God, then it, when, it's, when it's glorified that way, then men will they'll be very hesitant, at the very least, mm -hmm. to, to not treat it carefully. And to, and to not take liberties with it, not to uh, preach paraphrases or my view of this scripture or whatever it is, but that they would be true to what is written, that it would remain pure in, in our uses of it. So who will lead us in that request? That, the, that we're, we're going to pray that the word of God might have free course and be glorified. Sister Laura, Sister Bailey. Okay, thank you. Finally, we'll be in the uh, first epistle of John, chapter 5, and verses 14 and 15. This time we're going to ask that all believers would learn how to ask according to the will of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. This is one of the ways that God makes himself manifest in his people, by his obvious uh, responses to them. See, only a living God can do this. They're, the heathen have had gods, and they make requests of them, but they can't answer their requests. They can't respond to them. They can't move on their behalf. But a living God can. So whenever his people make petition according to the will of God, this is another way in which he's known too. How God answers demonstrates and, and shows us who God is and what he's like. God will only do righteously. So if a man, say for example, is, um, is asking amiss because his motives are not, um, they're not in harmony with what motivates God. I say motivate moves God to work. Well, then you don't need to, you don't need to be waiting around for the answer. God's, he's, he's not going to move like that. We have to come in line with what God is doing and learn how to, not only how to order our cause, how to, how to present ourselves to him, but also what causes to order. Is this something that God would want prayed about? 
Is this something that God would want to be known for doing? And whenever we ask him these things and then those prayers are answered, it makes a connection to ourselves and those that know about the prayer between what was asked and who answered it. And then they see God in it. This is one of the ways in which God glorifies himself and his people through our prayers. So besides the fact that we, we receive the things that are needful, when we pray according to his, his will, there are times whenever we pray things for ourselves that we would be strengthened and be a people that glorify God. And for help in time of, of need, and for grace and for mercy, uh, those type of things. And then, then God is, is moved by the prayer of the righteous. So we're going to ask that all believers would learn how to ask according to the will of God. you got to know God in order to be able to ask according to his will. Brother Robert, Sister Annie, Sister Laura. All right, thank you, brethren. Brother Given has our message tonight, and um, Brother Judah has the sermon text and an introduction. And